So in this video, I'm going to look at the evidence about how fast DNNs can run on FPGAs. And like some of the other videos about FPGA and GPU performance prospects, I'm really mostly just going to review the existing literature rather than uh, giving you any new and amazing insights of my own. So the first question about how fast uh, they can run is throughput. And for that, I wanted to start off with a chart from a 2018 paper, DNN Builder, an automated tool for building high-performance DNN hardware accelerators for FPGAs. And this table has uh, four different rows, each of which represent uh, the performance of AlexNet inference on either a uh, FPGA or a GPU. And it's split up so that there's a sort of a smaller FPGA along with a smaller GPU, and then a larger FPGA and a larger GPU. And then they show the precision, the batch size, the achieved throughput, the power, uh, and the efficiency in images per second per watt. And for all of the FPGA implementations, fixed point arithmetic was used. For the GPUs, floating point arithmetic was used. Um, and for the smaller GPU, it was float 16 with a small batch size. The larger GPU, float 32 with a comparatively large batch size. So even on the small uh, you know, FPGA that's only using 7 watts of power, our throughput was between um, 170 and 340 images per second. And if you're willing to scale that up to 22 watts and a larger batch size, you can get up to uh, over 1,000 images per second or well over 1,000 images per second at a, six, uh, at a batch size of 6. And what you can also see is that for floating point, really, um, the GPU performance is pretty similar. So the throughput is uh, you know, somewhere in between for the float 16 small GPU. And the throughput is substantially higher than either of the larger uh, FPGA implementations. Uh, though, of course, the throughput is a lot harder, higher at a much higher power consumption, which translates to lower overall efficiency. Um, so if you're just input interested in throughput and you really need floats, GPUs are uh, almost certainly the better choice. On the other hand, if you know power consumption and throughput or some mixture of power consumption and throughput really matters, you've got to have a small batch size and you don't really care about um, fixed point versus floating point, then uh, an FPGA could be a very attractive option. So the next thing to look at is not just throughput, but latency. And for that, um, I looked up uh, this interesting paper, Latency Driven Design for FPGA-Based Convolutional Neural Networks by Stavianos Venieris. This was from 2017. And in one of their results tables, um, they show their results and some comparisons to existing works, all of them with batch size one. So this is really optimizing for latency. We're not going to try to get any uh, extra performance by increasing the batch size. We're just going to try to push uh, one inference through the system as fast as possible. And they list a ton of different things here uh, for a variety of different FPGAs, because some of it's their work and some of it is um, you know, other work where they just have to cite uh, an alternative FPGA. Uh, but the most interesting one for us here is the latency. So they have uh, four entries for AlexNet and three entries for VGG16. And uh, for AlexNet, the lowest latency was 8.2 milliseconds and the highest was 21. So maybe a, you know, a factor of a little more than a factor of two, maybe almost a factor of three range. And uh, then for VGG16, uh, the lowest was uh, 33 milliseconds and the highest was uh, 250. So a little bit bigger of a range, but they also mentioned that an important factor to take into account is that 15, which is the uh, really low latency uh, VGG, runs on a platform with 2.7x5, 0.75x more, mem more on-chip memory, and 3.8x higher off-chip memory bandwidth, which is substantially reduced, I think they meant to say reduces, the memory accesses and the associated latency. Um, and then if you translate this into uh, gigaops per second, the uh, lowest gigaops per second was this guy, it was uh, AlexNet, where they got to 60 approximately gigaops per second. And then the highest, of course, was the, uh, the high off-chip bandwidth implementation, which got to almost a tera per second. So here's another one, which is power efficiency. So we've talked about throughput and latency. Uh, what about you know, the power efficiency of the design? You know, how much energy you have to spend to do an inference? And so for this, I was uh, looking at this really nice paper, a survey of FPGA-based neural network inference accelerators by Kai Yuan Guo et al. from 2019. And figure six in their paper is a chart where on the x-axis, you have log base 10 of power measured in watts. On the y-axis, you have log base 10 of speed as measured in gigaops per second. And then you have a plot with uh, colors and shapes indicating precision of different results achieved in the literature for uh, power versus performance or versus throughput. 
And on a plot like this, the, uh, these straight diagonal lines represent a constant energy efficiency. So this diagonal line is the 1 giga op per joule line. This is the 10 giga op per joule line. This is the 100 giga op per joule line. This is the 1 tera op per joule line. Now, by the time you get up to 1 tera op per joule, you'll notice that the only thing that gets even close is um, a 1-bit deep neural network. And at 1 tera op per joule, that's 1 trillion operations per joule, uh, which is 1 picojoule per operation. And one picojoule per operation is on the order of an arithmetic operation on an ASIC, right? And so uh, you really, really have to get down to um, extremely low per instruction energy costs in order to get there. And I think it's very, very unlikely that you'd be able to get there on an FPGA with uh, any kind of really high, even moderate precision. And as you can see, even at 100 gig ops per joule, I think the only things that cracked it were there's one 16-bit uh, DNN accelerator, and then there's another 1-bit guy and a 2-bit uh, DNN. So above the 100 gig op per joule line, it gets really hard to, uh, uh, well, it gets very hard to get above that line in energy efficiency if you're not uh, doing very, very low precision. And then what you see is that the vast majority of the implementations are hovering somewhere between 10 and 100 gig ops per joule. And for reference, they've also included four GPU implementations. And uh, as you can also see, the GPUs are all in the very high power consumption uh, part of this chart, right? So there's really not, at least in uh, the options they tested, a really high performance, low power GPU option. But maybe uh, you know, exploring smaller GPU architectures or new GPU architectures that have uh, native support for lower bit width arithmetic would change that. And so, Basically, the punchline is it's really hard to get to a tera op per joule unless you're doing very low precision. And it's even hard to crack 100 gig ops per joule if you're doing uh, modest precision. Most of the implementations are between 10 and 100 gig ops per joule. And if you don't care about power performance, a GPU is going to be better than almost anything on an FPGA. But if you do care about power performance, then suddenly uh, you know, the space of options offered by an FPGA is pretty nice. One last takeaway is that uh, floating point 16 and floating point 32 understandably didn't do that well in FPGAs. I think there's only four uh, floating point 32 options here, 77, 75, 74, and 12, um, and none of them look particularly good uh, compared to GPUs, though they do achieve uh, lower power performance. So in general, I think the, the overwhelming lesson here is if you really need floating point and you don't care about performance, a GPU is kind of a no-brainer. If either one of those is not true, then maybe there's a little bit more uh, freedom to choose between, say, a GPU and an FPGA for your implementation of a DNN. So I thought those papers were uh, pretty interesting and gave kind of a nice uh, reference point for what kinds of throughputs, latencies, and power performance you can expect for uh, FPGAs on DNNs. Hopefully it was helpful for you guys too, and I'll see you in the next video.